Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Tuesday, October 27th. Over the next couple of days, we will continue to have gusty to stronger northerly winds across southern areas of the Great Basin. Today, winds will be strongest with gusts between about 30 and 40 miles per hour and some areas just above 40 miles per hour with low relative humidity and still very dry fuels. On Wednesday, those northerly winds will shift a little bit further eastward and weaken somewhat with gusts generally in the 20s. We will have much lighter winds on Thursday. Still cool temperatures will continue today and we'll see gradual warming through the rest of the week. We've had no precipitation and lightning across the Great Basin and only very minimal light initial attack with a couple of small fires reported over western areas. Over the last seven days, we've only had some precipitation in the northern and eastern side of the Great Basin with that last cold front that pushed through, pushing showers through Idaho, Wyoming, and down even into parts of southeast Utah. However, over the last two weeks, we've seen very dry conditions over much of southern Idaho, western Utah, and across all of Nevada and the Arizona Strip. Currently, our fuel conditions are still showing critical fuels over southern areas of the Great Basin, but we have seen some moistening of the fuels further north with that last cold front. Looking at a couple of our point or our chart ERCs, you can see ERCs have come down over northern Utah, but are still at records for the time of year, but certainly quite a bit lower than they were a week ago. However, over southern areas that did not receive any of that moisture and just saw some cooler temperatures, our ERCs dropped a little bit to just below the 90th percentile, but are still at records for the time of year and obviously well above normal even for what we would see during the fire season. 10-hour fuel moisture showing the driest conditions across Nevada and areas that did not see any of the moisture but did see the cooler temperatures. And you can see how the fine fuels have increased in moisture over parts of Idaho, Wyoming, and into the eastern and southern half of Utah. The satellite image from this morning shows the strong area of low pressure that pushed that cold front through the Great Basin is now over southern Arizona with that breezy north-to-northeast flow continuing behind it across the area with cool temperatures. However, the high pressure off the west coast will move eastward, bringing us warmer and drier conditions and gradually decreasing winds. So for later today, we do have high risk over southern areas of the Great Basin, where those gusty to stronger north to northeast winds will continue in areas of low relative humidity and still very dry fuels. However, you can see across Idaho, Wyoming, and even northeast Utah how those fuels have been modified with the recent cold front, but still very dry conditions across Nevada and western Utah. The wind gusts for today, you can see on the left, those north to northeast winds, the areas in orange and purple are generally in the 30s to low 40s for gusts. Further north, we will see generally lighter winds, possibly some breezy winds over parts of central Idaho, but much higher humidity. The lowest humidities are in the south, where we will see single digits to low teens. As we move into Wednesday, the high pressure pushes a little bit further eastward, pushing those breezy winds over southern Utah. However, they won't be quite as strong as what we'll see today. We'll keep watching that to see if we need any additional high risk, but right now gusts look like they should be in the 20s with the strongest winds off to the east. So you can see those winds on Wednesday. Again, mainly gusts in the 20s. Could see a few gusts pop up above 30 or 35 miles per hour, so we will be watching southern Utah for the potential of high risk but the relative humidity not quite as dry as it is today over southern Nevada, mainly in the 15 to 18% range. On Thursday, high pressure continues to push eastward, so a significant decrease in winds in most areas, with drier conditions remaining over Nevada and Utah, and you will continue to see areas of Utah dry out as we move through later in the week. So again, generally light winds could still see some breezy winds over the Arizona Strip, but mainly in the 20s and relative humidity single digits to low teens across southern two-thirds of the Great Basin and still remaining above 25 or 30 percent up north. No precipitation is expected over the next few days and as we move into the end of the week and the weekend we will see a weak front brushing across Montana so maybe some slight cooling in the north and some cloud cover across Idaho but right now not expecting much precipitation with continued very dry conditions over the southern half of the region. This continues on Saturday as that high pressure continues to build, so gradually warming temperatures where valley temperatures will climb back up into the 70s over parts of northern half of the Great Basin and remaining in the 60s in the far north, and then into the 80s over southern areas of the basin. Sunday, that ridge moves overhead, so again, lighter winds, warm temperatures for the time of year, and just to continue drying across Nevada, Utah, and even into southern and southwest Idaho, we will see some of those lower elevation fuels dry out as we move through the weekend. And into Monday, that ridge continues to move eastward, so still warm and dry through the weekend into early next week, with no precipitation expected over the next seven days. 
The 8 to 14 day outlook takes us from November 3rd to November 9th, still looking at fairly warm conditions for the early part of November and drier conditions. We may see a cold front impact the area sometime later in the first week of November um, towards the middle of the month, but we'll continue watching that for another round of potentially cooler temperatures and some showers. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.